up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. I do new car track SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2023 Ford Mustang GT, courtesy of Bob Ruth Ford in Dillsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so today we are in this one because some of you guys may already know, I did own a 2019 Ford Mustang GT in need for green. I absolutely love that car, but got a new job where I had a heck of a drive and I have to drive through the winter. So rear wheel drive just didn't got to work out anymore. So I had to get rid of it, unfortunately. But I did want to check this one out because of course the Mustang does have better visibility than the Camaro, one of its competitors. Not only that, there is a complete redesign coming out for 2024. So the question really I'm going to lead to you guys for the comment section is, do you buy a 2023 now or do you wait for the redesign in 2024? So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about the 2023 Mustang GT from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and sell. There will be a few different trim levels for the 2023 Mustang GT. First, you got your base fastback starting at $38,345. Premium fastback, which is the one we are in today, starting at $43,365. And then there is the premium convertible going for $48,865. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Mustang GT is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a five liter naturally aspirated V8, cranking out 450 horsepower at 7,000 RPM, 401 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,600 RPM. Power is going to be sent to the rear wheels through your choice of either a six-speed manual with rev matching or a 10-speed automatic with paddle shifter. So last time I tested the Mustang GT, I did test it with the six-speed manual with rev matching. That was a blast. Today, we have the 10-speed automatic we're going to be testing out. And by the way, that 10-speed automatic, if you were interested, goes for $1,595. But when it comes to the zero to 60 time, again, it's going to differ depending upon the transmission setup that you go with. So for the six speed manual, that's going to put you at approximately 4.3 seconds. For the 10 speed automatic, that is going to put you at approximately 3.9 seconds. That's going to be mostly track times right there with those numbers. So you're not probably going to get those numbers on the street, but on the track, it is 100% doable. But top speed, 155 miles per hour with MPG numbers coming in at 15 in the city, 24 on the highway, taking premium unleaded fuel. And so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the Mustang GT, wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. There's little toggle switches. There's It's such a cool setup located just in front of the shifter. So if I toggle between them, I'm going to have drive modes like normal, snow and wet, sport, track, and drag. Adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the traction control settings. So then you might be asking yourself, well, what about the steering sensitivity? Can I adjust that? You can. There's actually another toggle switch just to the left of the drive mode toggle switch and when you hit that I always left it in sport driving mode by the way whatever I had my Mustang so we're gonna go ahead and just leave it in sport driving mode it does instantly make a much heavier weighted steering feel to this thing and I always absolutely love that steering feel so I'm just gonna leave it there but so then a couple other things I wanted to mention to you guys on the Mustang GT there is line lock which is pretty cool so if you were to take the Mustang GT to a drag strip you can essentially it locks up the front brakes allowing you to completely let the rear wheels fly and warm up the tires just before you go so that is pretty cool. I like that feature. There's also, of course, launch control to get your best start. And there's also track apps, which is a function within the digital portion of the gauges. And that's going to give you the ability to test out a bunch of different statistics. Like you could set it up to do a zero to 60 run, which I did all the time. It's my 2019 Ford Mustang GT. There's braking performance. There's lap times. There's a bunch of stuff. So that is pretty darn cool that that is there as well. So now I haven't got all of that out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me actually go ahead and put it in. I'm going to put it in Sport Plus driving mode here. So let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters first and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, three, two, one. First gear, go. Quick, quick. Okay, paddle shifters. And it's been a couple years since I've tested one of these. Paddle shifters are ridiculously quick. So that 10 speed automatic paired up with the paddle shifters did a wonderful job. And honestly, I was a little bit hesitant because a lot of times you only get quick reactive paddle shifters with a dual clutch transmission, but with the 10 speed automatic in the Ford Mustang GT, it did brilliant. So wonderfully quick paddle shifters in the Mustang GT. You are definitely not gonna be disappointed. And since we're touching on transmissions a little bit, that was one of the reasons that I personally went with the 10R80, the 10 speed automatic, just because I knew they were ridiculously quick. Now the six speed was heck of a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong, but the reliability 
with the six speed, the Tremec six speed manual in the Ford Mustang is not as good as the 10R80. I just wanna put that out there. So if you're looking for the more reliable transmission, rumor has it at least that the 10 speed is a heck of a lot more reliable than the six speed. So I'm just gonna put that out there. But now having said that, let's go ahead and get back full control to the Mustang GT here. Let's put the acceleration to the test with the car having full control and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, in three, oh, I love this straight away. Two, one, yo. Wow! <laughs> Whoa, that was fun. Dang, I missed that, man. It throws your head into the back of the seat. Like zero to 60 and 3.9 is dang good. And it, I know you're not gonna get that on the street. I know that I've tested it a thousand times, but it is still dang fun. Even without the six speed manual, this car has always been a blast with the 10 speed automatic because they did the 10 speed so dang well. You're gonna have fun in a Mustang GT no matter what, no matter what transmission setup that you go with. So that is a heck of an acceleration. And I'm done talking about acceleration because as always, braking is equally important. So the braking character, the braking setup, I should say, will differ pretty substantially. There's a bunch of different setups here. So up front, you will find 14 inch ventilated front disc with four piston front cappers. In the back, 13 inch rear disc with single piston rear cappers. That's the standard setup and that's probably the one that we have today, but it is the one that we have today because if you do go with the performance pack that goes for $6,700 now, back in the day when I got it, it was like 4,000 or whatever. But anyways, you will get 15 inch ventilated Brembo front discs with six piston front calipers. That is a heck of a braking setup right there. 60 is your stopping distance. I've seen it come in from anywhere from 99 feet to 104 feet. So 104 feet is ridiculous, you guys. And 99 feet is circuit track kind of ridiculous. So that is insane. It doesn't get a heck of a lot better than that. It might not even get any better than that. That is a heck of a 60 zero stopping distance number. And I can tell you guys the braking feel is so much on the firm side. It instantly brings you to a stop. It is definitely not a soft braking feel. And you wouldn't want that, of course, in a Mustang GT anyway. So instantly brings you to a stop. I absolutely love it. But then touching on suspension and handling, again, ton of options here as well. Independent front and rear suspension, of course. But if you were to go with that performance pack yet again, it's gonna add to that heavy duty front springs. You got a K brace, black painted strut tower brace. There's a torsen differential, unique chassis tuning, upsized rear sway bar. So quite a bit is added with that performance pack. But I did wanna add to that, there's a Magna Ride Dan Bank suspension. That's one I always like to recommend, by the way, that goes for $1,695, but that's essentially gonna monitor each shock absorber individually, tightening up the suspension during heavy cornering, but also reading the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride. And that is one thing I can tell you guys, that is a noticeable difference, especially with the Ford Mustang GT, because I've driven both at this point. It is a much smoother ride with that Magna Ride damping suspension because you really do tend to feel a good bit of the road in the Mustang GT. I'm just going to say that. As far as steering feel goes, that is wonderful though. Especially in that sports steering feel mode, it is such a heavy feel to the steering and I absolutely love it. That is something that I definitely miss. As far as cabin noise goes, it's actually really good. The only thing you really get a lot of is that beautiful exhaust note when you really get on this thing. And we're gonna do an exhaust clip a little bit later in the video, so make sure you stick around for that. But other than that, yeah, it sounds great. It's just the exhaust. There's no wind noise. There's no road noise really coming into the cabin whatsoever. It's just that beautiful exhaust note. So no complaints for me there. And touching on visibility, I could see 100% perfectly fine. I had never had any issues with rear visibility in the Mustang GT, so that is certainly 100% on point. And to my surprise, because this has changed since the 2019, I know at least, is when it comes to forward visibility, rain sensing windshield wipers now come standard on the Mustang GT. So that's pretty cool. So essentially what that is, is whenever the Mustang detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So it's just one less thing you gotta worry about, kind of like automatic headlights. So it's a convenience feature there, assisting with visibility yet again. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Ford Mustang GT. 
All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Ford Mustang GT finished in Grabber Blue Metallic. Yes, the legendary Grabber Blue. It's been around for quite a while on the Mustang, but definitely catches your attention, definitely looks good on this thing. But let's go ahead and start with where the Mustang is made. As you would imagine, it is made in America. The VIN does start with the number one. Specifically, it is made in Flat Rock, Michigan. So in case you were curious about that, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. There is going to be a new look again for the 2024 model year. So this is the last time you will see this specific look on the 2023 model year. So if you do like this look, now would be the time to actually pick one up because again, it is completely redesigned for 2024. Of course, you got the matte black upper and lower front grills up front there, chrome pony logo, but you can swap that out. There's a night pony package that goes for $1,195. That is gonna give you black emblems along with black wheels to go along with that. So you do have that option if you wanted. LED headlights do come standard with LED signature lighting as well. You do get LED daytime running lights to go along with all of that automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark and at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there that's always nice you do actually have led fog lights down below as well so it's pretty cool to go along with that one of the things that's going to differentiate itself a little bit again with the performance pack is you will get a performance pack specific front lip it's just going to be a little bigger basically a little more aggressive appearance to the front lip again that's only with the performance back and the other thing i wanted to mention to you guys on the hood here is these hood vents up front here they are actually functional so they are going to assist with a little bit of ventilation allowing the v8 to breathe a little bit so they are much needed so i do like that they are functional because so many vehicles out there these days a lot of times will just put them on for just looks so they do actually work here on the mustang but anyways pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so now since you are around to the side of this one black window surrounds do come standard taking a look at the front fenders you have that 5 -0 badging of course they are finished in chrome unless you go with the night pony package and then they're going to be finished in black body color power adjustable side mirrors will come standard but if you go with the premium like we have today we do have that premium trim level believe it or not you will get heated side mirrors with the pony projection lights at night so it's going to illuminate a pony logo onto the ground at night so that is pretty darn cool of course i can't show it to you guys right now but take a look at the wheel setup 18 inch machine finished aluminum alloys will come standard however if you go with that performance pack you're going to get 19 inch multi-spoke gloss black alloys and they are going to be a staggered fitment meaning a little bit wider in the back then in the front so you're not going to be able to rotate those unfortunately like you could with these for example and then there are other 19 inch wheel designs available most of them are staggered fitment as well but pretty much rounds out the side profile love the fastback style look here let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now since you are around to the back of this one all the way to the top you guys will find that body colored shark fin antenna just below that you got a high mount stop lamp which is pretty cool i like the look of that there is a body colored rear spoiler or kind of a deck lid spoiler that comes standard on the mustang gt However, there is an option for a spoiler delete. So if you didn't want that spoiler, you don't have to have it. So it can be completely nothing back there if you wanted to. And with the performance pack, you will get a lifted rear spoiler actually. So that's available as well. Chrome or gloss black GT logo, of course, found in the back, depending upon which package option that you go with. You do have LED sequential taillights, one of my favorite features in the Mustang, because when you put your turn signals on, it kind of slides from one tail light out to the outside of them. So kind of looks like it's sliding from the left to the right. So definitely a big fan of that look as well. Just below it all, you do have a pretty darn aggressive rear spoiler in matte black so love that look as well and then to the sides i told you guys an exhaust clip was coming to the sides dual exhaust outlets with quad tips and there is an active valve performance exhaust system that goes for 1225 dollars so that's going to be even louder and you can shut that off because it is active valve after all if you're just cruising down the highway so anyways having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. I 
right, so but now since we are around to the back of this one, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there are several different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a button on the key fob. You press it twice. That is one way to unlock it. There is another hidden button, a rubberized hidden button just underneath the GT logo, kind of just above the license plate, I should say. That's another way. And there is a button by the driver's side left knee as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13.5 cubic feet for the fastback and then 11.4 cubic feet for the convertible. That makes sense. If that was not enough space, there is a 50-50 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There are some uh, kind of tie down anchors back there. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire back there then as well. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, because yes, the Mustang does have rear legroom. It does have a rear seat. Rear legroom is gonna come in at 29 inches even, not a whole lot there for reference. I'll give it a shot. I'm an even six feet tall. This is me kind of not having a whole lot of space back there. So kids might be able to fit back there, but for adults, it's probably not doable, unfortunately. But then making our way up to the front seat, six-way power adjustable driver's seat actually comes standard with power lumbar as well. So I absolutely love that. Four-way power adjustable passenger seat comes standard. Cloth seating with the Mustang logo does come standard as well. Leather seating, though, is going to come on the premium trim level, and the premium trim is also going to give you heated and ventilated front seats as well. I got the heated seats on because it's freezing today here in PA. You also get memory settings for the 401A package that is specific to the premium trim, by the way. And then actually there is a Recaro bucket seat option that goes for $1,650. If you wanted that, those aren't heated. I wanted to specify that, but they're definitely going to hold you in place the best out of all these other options. So that is an option. But overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it's perfectly fine. It was perfectly fine in my cloth seats that I had on my 2019 Mustang GT. And it's perfectly fine in the leather seats as well. So did want to mention that. No problems with seat comfort there. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is going to be tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrap that comes standard. And if you were to go with that 4-win-A package again for the premium trim level, that goes for $2,700, by the way. That gives you a heated steering wheel then as well. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your silver pony logo on the one side. Then when you flip it over, you got all of your buttons, of course. Lock, unlock the button to pop the rear trunk. And times two button, that is going to be a remote start as well. So that's pretty cool. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter. And so once started up, gauges are going to differ. So there is an option that I want to tell you guys about. With the 41A package again, there is a full 12 inch digital gauge cluster. That's the coolest setup and that is completely customizable. But I will say these gauges aren't that bad that we have today. And this is what I had personally. So tachometers on your left, speedometers on your right. There's a digital display front and center, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel. And it's quite a bit that you can control. Like I said, you got track apps up there for one. It's also your outside temperature, of course, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's tire pressure information as well. But if you go under settings, there's actually your ambient lighting settings and gauge color settings which you can't adjust in the daytime but I was able to always do it in my garage which is probably the best place to do it but you can actually completely change the look of the gauges so instead of seeing the white that you're seeing right now you can make it a bright blue to match the exterior you can make all the ambient lighting in this vehicle bright blue to match the exterior I think that would be so stinking cool I had a green one I did the same for the gauges and the ambient lighting I made everything green so that's why I don't mind these gauges because they are still customizable in terms of color so I like that but now let's go ahead and touch on overall interior quality. Somebody always asked me in the comment section with my Mustang reviews. No, there's no moonroof or sunroof available for the Mustang, unfortunately. Auto dimming rear view mirror does come standard though. So if somebody has their high beams on behind you, you don't have to worry about that. And it's frameless as well, by the way. I like that. Dual zone climate control coming with the premium. Aluminum foot pedals coming with the premium. Universal garage door openers for up to three different garage doors found on the driver's side sun visor here. Again, for the premium trim level. Multicolor ambient lighting coming with the premium, but that is going to be an option for the base fastback. And that's actually how I ended up getting it when I had my Mustang. So you can still get the ambient lighting if you don't go with the premium. I'm just saying. Just in front of the shifter, you have a 12 volt power outlet. There's a USB charging port, a little bit of rubberized storage. You have dual cup holders behind the shifter. And within the center armrest, you have another 12 volt power outlet, another USB charging port. And overall, I like the little aluminum Mustang insignia found just above the passenger side glove box. I think that looks pretty cool. These heated seats are getting plenty warm as well. I also love that. If I'm being honest though, as far as interior quality goes, at least everything is kind of finished on the basic side of things. You do have a lot of hard plastics, but with the premium though, you do get a lot of upgraded stuff. So like 
the door panels, for example, are gonna be finished in leather as opposed to just a cloth finish, so I wanted to mention that. So it does get a little better with the premium, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech. So there's gonna be a couple different setups here. You got a 4.2 inch LCD screen for the base fastback. Then there's an eight inch color touchscreen display for the premium. That is gonna be optional for the base fastback, Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Factory navigation system though is gonna be optional on the Mustang. I like that. You can adjust your climate control settings up there as well. And of course, your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, there's a few of them. Six speakers is gonna come standard. Nine speakers is gonna come on the premium and that nine speaker sound system is available for the bass fastback. And then there is a 12 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system that goes for $995. So that's an option, it is available. That's obviously gonna be your best one. But having said that, we of course have the nine speaker sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And Let's test out the clarity of this one. And actually, I never had a problem with my nine speaker sound system I had in my car either. Plenty of bass, plenty of clarity, and really, when you're talking about the size of the Mustang being not all that big of a cabin, nine speakers is really overkill, so that's great. Obviously, the Bang & Olufsen is gonna be better, but nine speakers in this size of a vehicle, it's excellent, so no problems there. But last thing I wanna to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen at least is when you do put the Mustang in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Pretty high definition as well, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side side curtain airbags do come standard. You do have a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, higher pressure monitoring system, automatic high beams are gonna be optional for the Mustang GT. I wanted to mention that. Adaptive cruise control is gonna be available then with the safe and smart package that goes for $725. But Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Mustang GT, a great performance car, and in my personal opinion, which is the reason why I got it back in the day, when I didn't have to drive in the snow at least, is it is the best bang for your buck in my opinion. As far as what you get for the money, this thing is an absolute blast without a doubt. I personally would recommend the performance package. I actually did go with the performance package when I got mine. Definitely makes a big difference there. Adaptive damping suspension, I would definitely recommend. I didn't get it on mine, but how, if I were to do it again, I would because it's definitely a firm ride. I'm gonna be 100% honest, as you would expect the Mustang to be, but you definitely do feel a good bit in the adaptive damping suspension, the Magna Ride damping suspension, I should say, definitely helps you out with that. As far as room for improvement goes, I only got two things. Interior quality is definitely not the best. They could definitely spruce this thing up, give it a little more design, basically, rather than just matte black plastics and a couple gray plastics, so little room for improvement there and also i wouldn't mind seeing a sunroof or a moonroof available in this thing because if you look at the competition like the challenger and the camaro you can get it in those but you can't get it in the mustang for whatever reason but anyways that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know i will see you guys all in the next video Stay gold.